Hello, this is Tony Hiller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. This video is titled, Fire Conspiracy Theorist. This graph was published by the U.S. Forest Service a few years ago. It shows burn acreage in the U.S. going back for a century. As you can see, there was a huge spike in burn acreage from the 1920s through the 1950s. And since the 1950s, burn acreage in the United States has been very low by historical standards. There has, however, been a very small upswing in forest fire burn acreage in the U.S. over the last 20 years. So climate alarmists, of course, want you to see this very small upswing over the last 20 years and not see the huge spike prior to the 1960s. So they've come up with all sorts of wonderful excuses to ignore the pre-1960 data. My three favorites that I've heard are, they used to start the fires intentionally, or firefighting techniques got better, or people just didn't used to know how to do addition properly. That one's my favorite. In the 1930s, they built the Golden Gate Bridge and they split the atom, but they couldn't figure out how to total up forest fire burn acreage. That makes a lot of sense. My experience with climate alarmists is that they're some of the most ignorant, intellectually lazy, and poorly educated people on the face of the earth. Yet they imagine themselves to be very sophisticated and much smarter than previous generations. But I don't want to waste time on the ridiculous theories. Instead, let's look at the real reason for this big spike in fires during the 1930s. This is the U.S. heat wave graph from the 2017 National Climate Assessment. Note that it shows exactly the same thing as the forest fire burn acreage graph, a huge spike from the 1920s through the 1950s. Now let's overlay the two graphs together. The red graph is the heat wave graph, and the blue graph is the forest fire burn acreage graph. You can see that there is excellent correlation there. The spikes line up very closely, and this little uptick towards the end also appears in both graphs. Heat waves are associated with drought. The worst droughts in U.S. history occurred during the 1930s, right at the peak of these heat waves. It all makes perfect sense. It was very hot and dry during the 1930s, so we had a lot of fires and very high burn acreage. This is very basic science. The high burn acreage was due to very hot, dry conditions. There is no reason to discount this huge pre-1960 spike in U.S. burn acreage. It was very real. So now let's look at the part of the National Climate Assessment which was released to politicians and the press. First we're going to look at this graph, U.S. wildfires. It shows that upswing in fires since the 1980s. So the intention is to fool journalists and politicians into believing that wildfires are increasing due to carbon dioxide. Now let's look at what the fraudsters who made the summary document of the National Climate Assessment did to the data. This little rectangle here is the part of the fire graph which was put in the summary document. Note that they started right at the low point and they left off the huge spike in burn acreage prior to the start of their graph. They picked the only point in the graph where they could start and make it look like fire burn acreage was increasing in the United States even though there's been a huge decrease. People at Enron went to jail for doing much less than this sort of fraud, which is in the National Climate Assessment. This next graph shows in pink all the data that was hidden in the summary documents of the National Climate Assessment. You can see exactly why they hid it. It wrecks their story. The burn acreage was very real during the 1930s, and people were able to count very adequately. This article from the New York Times from 1938 details in great detail the amount of burn acreage and exactly what was going on. The people who built the Golden Gate Bridge and split the atom during the 1930s were very good at mathematics, unlike many modern climate scientists who are completely incompetent. Here's the lead story from the Santa Cruz News, Santa Cruz, California, Saturday, December 5th, 1936. Forest fires are current in Santa Cruz Mountains for a century, seen as greatest peril to future prosperity. So California has been having huge forest fires since at least 1834, and they viewed it as an even bigger threat than earthquakes. 
California has a long history of very severe droughts. Some of their droughts from a thousand years ago lasted for 200 years, and the past century was actually the wettest on record in California. This graph was published in the San Jose Mercury News a few years ago. Climate alarmists believe that these huge droughts in the past were natural, but the little tiny recent droughts were man-made. Climate alarmists are not doing science, they're doing 100% propaganda. But I'm not done yet with the fraud and the summary documents of the National Climate Assessment. Remember this heat wave graph from the data portion of the National Climate Assessment going back to the year 1900, which showed a huge spike in the 1930s. Do you think that graph made it into the summary document? Well, of course not. The summary document had this heat wave graph, which started very conveniently in the 1960s. Now let's look at exactly what they did. This rectangle here is the part of the heat wave graph which made it into the summary document. And all of this is what they left off. Once again, they started their graph right at the low point, the only place they could have started the graph to make it look like heat waves were increasing when actually there's been a huge decrease in U.S. heat waves. And here's the pink rectangle which shows all the data that was hidden. These people are not doing science, they're committing fraud. For reference, this is the main page that was used by politicians and journalists from the National Climate Assessment. Here's the heat wave graph over here, and here's the U.S. wildfires graph over here. And then other fraudsters like the Union of Concerned Scientists take the fake data from the National Climate Assessment and turn it into stories like this. Is global warming fueling increased wildfire risks? And the answer is a resounding no. Wildfires are way down in the U.S. Heat waves are way down in the U.S. And drought is also way down in the U.S. The U.S. climate has become much less extreme over the last 80 years. Yet they have people hysterical believing that we're about to die in the next 12 years, or as Prince Charles said, in the next 18 months. The whole thing is a total scam, and they're trying to bully people into compliance with their plans to take over the U.S. energy industry. It's very important that we all fight back and stop them from doing this. Running short of energy because we chose to rely on imaginary green energy would be catastrophic it would completely destroy Western civilization. So what can you do? You can get involved. Your future and your children's future depends on shutting these crooks down. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.